Hey everyone, today I have a total body circuit workout for you that is gonna take you just under 30 minutes to complete. For equipment, you're going to need either a heavy kettlebell or a heavy dumbbell. Now, I'm gonna be using both because for one of the exercises, I do prefer having the high handle of the kettlebell, but if you don't have both at your disposal, do not worry about it. All these exercises can be done with a kettlebell. All of them can be done with a dumbbell as well. Now you have six exercises in this circuit. We're gonna use an interval structure of 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest. When you complete the circuit of six exercises, you get a full minute to recover before we start again. In total, we're gonna to go through the circuit four times. There are some exercises in which we'll be isolating one side, so we'll alternate as we go, left, right, left, right. So I'm using 20 pounds as my heavy weight. I want you to do whatever works for you. And if you do have access to a lighter option, have that on hand as well. Yes, we wanna challenge ourselves with the weight, but if it gets to the point where form is getting sloppy, it is so much better to go a little lighter and do the exercises properly. As with all workouts, you wanna make sure you're properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body, modifying or stopping as needed. Before we get going, I'm gonna give you a preview of all the exercises and I will also show you how to modify them. Keep in mind that a great way to modify all six of them, just use a lighter weight. If you're new to my channel, I don't play music in the background because I want you to be able to listen to whatever you like. So if you don't have a playlist or a podcast or a TV show queued up, you might want to get that going. And with all that said, let's get to our preview. Okay, first up we have a goblet squat with a pulse at the bottom using your heavy dumbbell or heavy kettlebell. You'll hold it close to your chest, elbows tucked in, brought across the collarbones, feet, hips to shoulder width apart. And let's go squat down, give me a pulse at the bottom and then drive up. I want you to think of grounding down through your feet. You're squeezing your seat at the top as you stand and the squat is created by the hip hinge. So your hips start to slide back, knees bend, torso hinges forward but without rounding through your shoulders. All right, you have 20 seconds to rest. This second exercise is gonna be a squat clean. So think of it as sort of a progression of that first exercise. If you're using the dumbbell, stand it up tall like I'm doing, or if you have the kettlebell just as is, you want it placed between your feet a little in front of them. You're gonna start in that low squat. 
We clean it, we squat down, drive it up, flip the grip, return it down to just lightly tap the floor. It can rest on the floor for a second. So when you do that clean, instead of thinking of it as an arm exercise, think of it like a leg exercise. So it's the power from your legs that draws that weight up. It's not so much the pull of your arms. This is a core exercise as well. So make sure as you stand, you're engaging through the abdominals. Twenty seconds to rest. Now the next three movements are going to focus on the left arm, and these next two will focus on the right leg. So I'm going to switch to my kettlebell because I like having a higher handle for this one. Again, you don't need a kettlebell though. It's going to be a lunge row, and then you'll step the back foot forward in a high pull. I'm going to start with the high pull. So your right foot stays planted, left arm does the high pull, left leg steps back into the lunge, row on that left arm, and then step forward. So. Left arm is the focus, and you're going to feel that right leg start to talk to you. When you do the high pull, it's like you're zippering up a jacket, so that weight comes right up the center of your chest, staying really close to your body. Same thing we were talking about with that clean. Think of creating that high pull, not by the arm, but first the power of the legs. One row, one high pull. Twenty seconds to rest. I'm going to go back to using my dumbbell, but stick with whatever works for you. So this next exercise, um, still going to work a lunge with the right leg forward, and we're going to have the weight in our left hand. It's going to be a split lunge shoulder press. We'll step forward into a squat, and we'll do a squat press or a squat thrust. It's called. So shoulder press, shoulder press. In the split lunge. There's a little straightening of the legs as you do the shoulder press, but don't lock out the knees. And then staying low, you step forward into that squat and then drive through the legs coming into that press. Now, if this gets to be too much for your shoulder, um, then maybe you eliminate the press in the lunge and you just pulse the legs or vice versa. You could eliminate the thrust coming out of the squat. Now that that weight is going overhead, I want you to check in with your low back. Don't overarch into it, okay? You gotta connect through the abdominals, brace through your core. Woo, okay, 20 seconds to rest. We got windmills up next. The weight is going to be in your left hand still. Last move, isolating this left arm. The foot position, your left toes will point forward. Your right foot is going to point to the side, so you make kind of a 90-degree angle with those feet. And then keeping your left leg pretty straight, you're going to bend slightly through that right knee as you slide the right hand down the inside of the leg and come up. Now, this is a shoulder stability exercise. I want you to look at the weight in that top hand as you do this, and you're going to feel your arm rotate in the shoulder socket as you lower and lift so that it's always pointing straight up towards the ceiling. I want you to exhale as you stand up, engage the left side obliques to bring your body back upright. If this one is too much for your top shoulder, then next round, do it with the weight in your bottom hand instead. Oh, and 20 seconds stress, come out of it carefully. You're going to make your way down to the floor, to your mat. Last exercise in the circuit, Russian twists. So we're going to balance just behind our sits bone here. Bring the weight in front of your chest. Lift those feet off the floor, and you're going to twist, bringing the weight to the outside of one hip and then the next. Now, if your hip flexors are starting to bother you, you in this one, first, I just want to say this is a workout for your hip flexors, this exercise. So good. You should feel them a little bit. If it's wildly uncomfortable, though, then you can always plant your heels down and you can even butterfly your knees out wide and that might help. And done with your first time through the circuit. So I'm going to give you a full 60 seconds to recover. Maybe that sounds like a long time. Maybe it doesn't sound like long enough. Um, but I want you to have ample recovery time so that when we're working with these heavier weights, your form isn't sacrificed, okay? We still got three more times through that circuit.
All right, let's get ready for that first exercise. It's that goblet squat with the pulse at the bottom and kind of assess the weight. Did it feel too easy the first round, too hard? Adjust the weight accordingly. When you hear those beeps, 40 seconds will start. Let's go take it to the bottom. One pulse, drive up. So the hips slide back as you lower into the squat. The hips go forward. You squeeze through the glutes. You brace through the abdominals at the top. If you want a challenge, you could add two pulses at the bottom instead of one. And if the pulse gets to be too much, just focus on the squat down and up. No pause at the bottom. Twenty seconds to rest. Second exercise will be the squat clean, so it's sort of um, an advancement of the previous exercise. We'll make it a little more dynamic, a little more explosive. All right, weight is between your feet. Sink down low, clean it, squat it, back to the top, flip the grip, take it down to the ground. So very important when you're grabbing the weight off the floor, you're able to grab it because you're in a low squat, not because you're just folding forward and rounding through your back. So I need you to think long neutral spine. It's hinged forward, but you haven't changed the shape out of that neutral. So you have that broadness across the collarbones. And I know I am a broken record, but when we start to get tired, our form starts to slip and it's important to go through that little form checklist. Twenty seconds to rest. So the next three movements will isolate one side. It's going to be your right arm, left leg. So again, I'm going to switch to my kettlebell for this one. In the lunge position, left foot is forward, right foot is back. Right hand will grab the weight when you're in the lunge. I'll start with the high pull though. Mirror me. Right hand, high pull, lower it down. Step that right foot back into your split lunge, one row. So we are staying low on that left side as you transfer from bringing the weight to the floor back into that lunge. Now with a high pull, the upward movement is very explosive, but the lowering back down of the weight is controlled. So it should take you longer to bring the weight back down to the floor than it did for you to come to the top of that high pull. That's important for protecting your shoulder, okay? and rest. So the right arm is going to still be the focus. We're going to hold the weight in our right hand. We'll start in that split lunge. Your left foot will be forward, right foot back. We're going to do that shoulder pulse in the split lunge with a little press through the legs. And then weight on shoulder, step to a low squat, stand and thrust that weight back up. It should be very challenging for that right arm. Again, you can always take out one of the shoulder presses. So maybe you just do it when you're in the split lunge or just do it coming out of that squat, whichever one feels a little more stable for you. It is normal to notice differences between your sides. So maybe your left arm crushed it, right arm not so much. That is normal. Go slow. I care more about form than about how many reps you get in. Ooh, I'm dying. <laughs> okay, and rest. So windmill is up next. This is the last one isolating one side. Right arm still has the weight. Press it up overhead. Right toes point forward. Left toes angle out. So 90 degree angle with the feet. You have a wide stance here. You're kind of popping the hip over towards the right as you lower down. Left hand slides down the inside of that left leg. Unlock your left knee. I want you to exhale as you come up, engaging through the right side obliques to help bring you to the top. The weight should be pointing at the ceiling the whole time, so it is very helpful to look at the weight.
20 seconds to rest. We're gonna make our way down to the floor. We have those Russian twists coming up next. So we are going to balance just behind those sits bones here. Weight is at your chest, and with your feet hovering, you're gonna twist side to side with control, okay? And when I say with control, what I mean is I don't want a ton of countering and rocking through your lower half as you do this. You're gonna notice your feet are gonna to wanna to swing side to side. See if you can keep equal weight through the pelvis though. Both sides of the pelvis bear the same amount of weight as you twist side to side. It takes a lot of abdominal control. Awesome work, you are halfway through. I'm gonna give you another full minute to recover, but if you need longer, hit pause on this video. Maybe you take a couple minutes instead. All right, round three, are you ready? We're gonna start at the top with that goblet squat, adding in the pulse at the bottom. Your feet are gonna be about hips distance, shoulder distance apart. And your knees are gonna track in line with your middle toes. It's very common for them to wanna kind of buckle inward. Don't let them. So we gotta stay active through our outer hips so that they track in the proper direction. Sinking down, one pulse and to the top. And one little note about that, if you have a really hard time um, feeling your glutes in a squat, it could be helpful to do these barefoot so that you can focus on grounding down through your big toe. You ground through your big toe without collapsing into the arches. You're still trying to do that in your sneaker, but admittedly, it's a little easier to feel that grounding when you're barefoot. So just a little tip, maybe you try it if you're having trouble with your squats. and 20 seconds to rest. Went on a little bit of a tangent with that one. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll go into our squat cleans. If you're using a dumbbell, stand it up tall. Find that low squat position, drive through your legs to clean the weight to your chest, one squat and reverse it. When you reverse it and return it to the ground, it's with control. So if these bother your shoulders, then you're just letting that weight fall to the ground, all right? Check in with those knees. Same thing I was talking about with the goblet squat. They should be tracking in line with your middle toes. Don't let them buckle inward. Engage through your outer hips and seat. and 20 seconds stressed. So we're gonna go into those unilat unilateral movements, can't talk. We'll start with the split lunge row with the high pull. I'll start with the high pull. I'm gonna switch to my kettlebell for this one, but you don't have to. So left arm is gonna be grabbing your weight. Mirror me, left hand grabs it, one high pull, put it down. Left foot steps back, right leg stays planted, one row. Step it forward. Now again, you're getting the weight up in that high pull because your legs are explosively driving through the floor, hips come forward, squeeze through the glutes. That power and the control through your core, and then finally the pull of your arm is what creates the movement. Don't just let the weight fall to the ground. Again, it should take longer to lower the weight than to drive it up to the ceiling. Twenty seconds to rest. Next combo coming up will be that split lunge shoulder press, stepping into the squat, squat press. 
So weight is in your left hand, right foot is forward in your split lunge. One shoulder press in the split lunge, step it forward, low squat, drive those hips up, another press. It's very important that your core is active on this one or this is going to bother your low back, okay? So I want you to do the shoulder press on an exhale. As the weight goes up, you're exhaling, you're engaging the abdominals, and we're maintaining neutral spine. We're not overarching into that low back. This is the hardest one for me in this workout. You'll notice I slow down so much at the end. Better to do fewer reps though and make them good. And rest. One more exercise isolating this left arm, specifically this left shoulder, will go into those windmills. So left hand has the weight, press it up overhead. Left foot points forward, right toes point to the side. Your hip pops back to the left as you slide the right hand down the inside of that right leg towards the floor. Exhale, bring it up to the top. You're looking at that weight. Your arm is pivoting in that shoulder socket as you lower and lift up to stabilize the weight and keep it pointing straight up to the ceiling the whole time. Unlock your right knee. There can be a bend to it as you lower. And square off through the feet, lower that weight with control. You're done. Awesome job. One more exercise in this round. Make your way down to your mat. We have Russian twists. And let's go twisting side to side. Legs are lifted. So again, you will feel your hip flexors in this one. They're working, and we should be working to strengthen them. But if they really bother you, a couple options. You can put your heels down and even butterfly your knees out to the side a little bit, or try crossing one ankle over the other. And then halfway through or the next round, you would just switch which ankle is on top. That can also help a lot. And rest, you have a full 60 seconds, and then we are in our final round of this workout. So take, take these 60 seconds to catch your breath. If it's not enough time, pause the video, take a little longer. All right, last time through, let's do this goblet squat with a pulse. If you need to drop weight, go a little lighter. I care most about form. 40 seconds on the clock at the beeps. Let's go, take it down to your low squat, one pulse, drive it up and forward. So I know you can't hear me breathing because I'm doing a voiceover, but I am exhaling as I come to the top of this squat. That exhale reminds me to engage my abdominals so that as I stand up, I don't hyperextend into the low back. So it's like I'm coming into a vertical plank, squeezing my glutes. Exhale, drive up and then lower down. Twenty seconds to rest. We're going to add on to that, make it a little more dynamic, a little more explosive. We'll take it to our squat cleans up next. If you're using that dumbbell, stack it up and down. All right, let's find that low squat stance brought across the collarbones. Reach your tailbone back. Clean it, driving through the legs, down and up, and return it.
Remember, you're returning that weight to the floor with control, so it shouldn't be slamming onto the ground. It should lightly come to the floor. Maybe it just taps it. Two exercises down, four to go. We are going to come into those, um, almost said isometric moves, <laughs> unilateral moves. That's the word. I'm switching to my kettlebell. Your right hand is going to grab the weight. I'll start with the high pull. And you're going to mirror me. So grab that weight with your right hand, high pull, step your left foot, sorry, right foot back, one row. So your left leg is staying stationary. So you're gonna feel the burn in that left leg as our right arm works. When you do the row, don't collapse into your back. So that's another one. I recommend rowing on the exhale, maintain that abdominal connection. It's really important. and rest. Got another combo coming up. It's going to be that split lunge shoulder press and then that squat press. Weight is in your right hand. Split lunge position with your left foot forward. Split lunge press, low squat, drive it up thrust at the top. Now, if these are getting sloppy, I want you to take out one of the shoulder presses, okay? So only do it in the split lunge or only doing it coming out of your squat, whichever feels more stable and controlled for you. Ooh, I'm slowing down. These are tough for me. Ooh, and rest. I'm shaking my head. I know I wimped out at the end. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right, two exercises to go. Windmills coming up. So right hand has the weight. You're mirroring me. Press that weight up. Left toes point out. Right toes point forward. Slide the left hand down the inside of your leg. Exhale, engage through the right side obliques as you bring yourself back up to the top. Look at that weight as you go. If this is too much for your shoulder, you're going to hold the weight in the bottom hand instead. So it'll be more of an obliques focus. A little less of a shoulders focus that way. Ten seconds to go. Try to get in one more solid rep. Ooh, and rest. Okay, final exercise coming up. You're in your last 40 seconds of this workout. Once you hear those beeps, it's Russian twists. So we're going to make our way to the floor. Balancing just behind those sits bones. Weight at your chest. And we'll twist it side to side. That was pickles shaking that you just heard. <laughs> right, we're going to twist side to side. Feet are hovering. Again, think about keeping equal weight through the hips as you do this. You have under 10 seconds to go. And done. Awesome job with this workout. Hope you enjoyed that workout. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new workouts here every Monday. I'll see you guys next week.